Okay, so this is um, NFL Blitz. I'm going to troubleshoot. I actually picked up this board off of eBay, and it came with um, the 2000 ROM and security chip um, and a hard drive. And I had this uh, other Seattle board. Um, I think this is one, if you look, let me see if I can show you. If you look by these heat sinks here, I can get it zoomed in here. That's a little bit of, it's upside down, but um, you can see that that's a 06 Seattle 57701520606 board. And this one is the one I picked up is a 08. Um, but other than that, the boards are pretty much identical. And I know that this one from previous troubleshooting is, was not working. And I already know that this one is working, but I'm going to kind of check, take you through some of the uh, LED indicators because there's not a lot of information out there about it. So what I did is I um, grabbed an old computer power supply that I removed. And I have, I'm going to set up a little, to bypass the switch to turn it on, I have a little jumper set up. And I use the 5 volt and 12 volts um, that would norm the this connector here would normally be used in the game to power up the hard drive but I'm actually using it to power up the board for this test right here and I don't have the hard drives connected at this time so I'm gonna pause real quick and power up the board without um, any boot ROM or without any security chip and uh, no no sound uh, ROM as well so no security ROM or, or sound ROM. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so just to go through the LEDs real quick, in the upper right-hand corner here, uh, you have the 5-volt LED lit. The minus 5 is not lit, and then the plus 12 is lit. Um, that's what you're seeing there because we're not pr um, providing any minus 5 volts via this power supply. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure what the top LED is. I'd have to look that one up. But uh, these three LEDs here, when they're all lit solid like this, are all related to the CPU. Um, so the first LED, LED number two, at the top is red, means the processor is in is in reset. Um, and I'll just highlight this part right here. So LED. Uh, number two, if you can see that, is red and it's on processor reset. Number two, number three is yellow and if it's on, the processor's in reset. And it kind of indicates that the uh, yellow one actually um, accesses part of the ROM instruction set in the boot ROM. And since it's not there, that is why it's all on solid. So. Anyway, the other, the first LED is all the way down here by the hard drive, and obviously I don't have that hooked up, and it's not on either. So one of the things you can do is hit this reset button, and you notice that nothing happens when I hit the reset button. It just stays lit. So this w is what it looks like when there's no chips in, or if the processor is just stuck in reset. Okay. Now I'm going to put the uh, secure the ROM chip in without the security chip and, and show you the boot process. Okay, so I have put the um, actually I put in a Blitz 99 uh, boot ROM, and I'm going to try to do this with one hand. I'm going to actually apply remove the power. And now I'm going to apply power. And as you can see, what you get with the, the CPU LED indicators is an initial yellow, which means it's accessing the boot ROM, and then green and red are stuck on for processor reset. So both all three of those are CPU indicators, and um, they are stuck on, but you notice that the yellow one is actually off. It blinked on for a split second, accessed the boot ROM, and uh, then turned off. Alright, so let me put the security chip in real quick. 
Okay, so now I have the uh, 99 security chip in. And just make sure you put these chips, when you're taking them in and out, obviously make sure you put them in the right direction. Um, I did make a quick mistake, and, re and the chip was getting really hot real fast, and I realized what I did, and um, it immediately removed it. So, so thank goodness I didn't da damage anything. So I'm going to apply power now. We get the yellow, the green, and the red, then some flashing indicators, okay? And now the lights go off. So this, if you were watching this and this um, PCB was hooked up to the monitor, you would actually um, be getting a test screen at this point showing you that the CPU test um, uh, was passed um, and you would have some diagnostics. Now it's going through a reset because it could not access the hard drive. It actually started resetting on its own. And that's what you'll see. And you'll, you'll keep seeing the same sequence over and over again because there's no hard drive accessed. And there it goes again. Okay, so I actually had to um, make sure I put the power, my power switch in correctly so it stayed in, so the power stayed active. But um, also, you can hit the CPU reset and it will obviously light all three LEDs and then go through the sequence again. Um, and the manual actually kind of tells you that LED 2 and 3 are both monitoring part of the boot ROM instruction set. And LED 4, I believe, is the green one, which is on the, this next page. And if it stays off, it, you know, it says right there, uh, no boot ROM. And if it stays on, the processor's in reset. But anyway, you guys can see this in the manual anyway. But another thing I was going to mention is that um, this board actually came with Jumper J6, um, 2 and 3, uh, Jumper together. And it says in the manual that that is for um, accessing uh, or configuring U32 for 4 megabyte boot ROM. And U32 is, you can see that right there. And what's really interesting is that I do not have that set. Let me see if I can get this focused. Um, and it is a M27C4001 10F1, which is a 4 megabyte uh, boot ROM. And it seems to be working fine. The uh, initial ROM that came with it is also of the same type, um, which is a, which has NFL 2000 on it. It's still four megabytes. So I will kind of show uh, maybe a little bit. But what I did is I put um, a continuity tester on J7 and J8, which which the manual actually says are also to be used for configuring a four megabyte uh, boot ROM. But they're actually already have continuity between pins one and two here and I believe two and three here uh, obviously I can't test that while I'm holding the camera but um, anyway I still haven't figured out if these jumpers actually do anything um, some of them are already come out of the factory like J7 and J8 are already jumpered even though you don't see a jumper there um, they are tied together uh, on the board and J6 is not um, jumpered, but um, w whether you have a jumper on it or not, it seems like 4 megabyte ROMs work fine, so I haven't figured that part out yet. So anyway, I'm going to disconnect this and actually put in um, a, a, this board over here that does not work, even though it has good uh, boot ROMs and security codes, and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's the uh, Seattle board that is not working. Um, and we'll apply power here and show you in a second. So as soon as I apply power, even with a known good boot ROM and security uh, chip, all three LEDs are locked on. So obviously if you're buying anything on eBay um, and this person says they don't know whether it's working or not, 
um, this hopefully will give you some clues and stuff. So, or if you're troubleshooting something on your own, you know that if there's a known good boot ROM and security code, you should get LED indicators um, anytime you apply minus five, I mean plus five volts to it, uh, so you can know that it's actually the the processor is good itself. All right. Okay, the uh, last thing I want to show real quick is um, back to a known good um, Seattle board with a known good boot ROM and security chip. I, I'm not worried about the sound chip right now. Um, just so you know, the sound ROM is actually checked after the hard disk in the in the boot diagnostics when uh, in the initial boot diagnostics when the board first boots up. One thing to check is. In this board, actually, I'm missing my U9 uh, dip switch setting, so everything is off. This board had a rough time. It had a lot of bent and broken pins and stuff. But um, you can, on U9, I think it's uh, number 8 or something like that, switch 8. I'm not sure, but you can disable the boot up diagnostics. Um, but obviously, for this, for testing and uh, when you're diagnostic, doing diagnostics, uh, you want to make sure that's off. So... Anyway, all of mine are off here. This also controls the 49-way joystick. So to get this board fully working, I'm going to have to, um, you know, do some things. Actually, that's U8. I'm sorry. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm going to hit the processor reset and zoom out. The hard drive indicator lights down here. So when you go through the boot diagnostics, the boot sequence here, we should see a flash down here for the hard drive after the boot ROM instruction code is read. It should be looking for, you know, this this LED down here for the hard drive, and doing um, a disk initialization test. Unfortunately, if you can hear nothing, that's because this drive is not spinning at all, um, and we have no indicator light there. So I'm going. I do have a working hard drive here. This is actually for NFL Blitz '97, and I have no idea what this one's for. I assume it's 2000, but it's not working, so I'm going to hook up a hard drive that's known to be working and show you the LED. Okay, I really need to install a switch to make this easier on me, but um, I'm going to apply power here to the uh, power supply, and then you'll, event you'll hopefully see the lights and actually hear the hard drive. So you'll see the lights go through the boot sequence. There the hard drive comes on, you see the hard drive light is lit. It's doing an initial check, goes off, and because this is a 97 um, hard drive, it light and it doesn't match the security chip, um, likely it's going to cause a reset here in a second. So you will see there. The only way to know for sure is if I had it hooked up to a screen, but it does look like it um, causes the CPU to reset, or it could be because I don't have the sound ROM, so it's not bypassing the full uh, diagnostics check. So I, I can try that actually. Let me put the uh, sound ROM in and see if uh, it stops the resetting. But that's what it's going through. It's kind of going through the same same process over time, like a watchdog is being triggered so okay but obviously you can hear the disc spinning and that's what a normal Seattle board uh, should look like when it first boots up for the most part okay so I just put in the sound card and just applied power we hear the uh, disc drive spinning up Okay, now we see the sound ROM LED being checked. So we are getting further in the diagnostics because the sound ROM now was flashing. And I don't know if it's going to watchdog again, but I'll spare you guys. But anyway, that's kind of 
what it looks like. Obviously, it went through the the watchdog it got reset most likely because again this this hard drive is not working with that security chip but the good news is is I do have a known working 97 and I will power that up real quickly uh, just so we can see what it looks like with a uh, the whole thing uh, matched and working okay so this is a known good 97 There we go, I just got the power started. So, known good 97, uh, Seattle Blitz. We'll watch the, we have a hard drive spinning up, sound round, went through our CPU diagnostics. We can see that the, uh, there's, the CPU light is yellow and green right now. And no, no hard drive. It's hard to see. Sorry about that. And I believe that normal yellow flashing uh, for both the sound ROM and uh, the, for the CPU is normal, um, as well as the hard drive indicator light flashing like that. It's obviously reading stuff, so I'm pretty sure the game is is fully booted and working with this this uh, setup here. And you can see that what the lights would look like as far as a system that's working inside the game. Matter of fact, I think it says, uh, if you look at here, the manual, LED number two, the red one, uh, must be active only during power on and reset. LED three must be active only on, um, must be active only during power on and reset. And those are going from um, top to bottom. And LED four may appear very irregular during circuit reset. So I'm pretty sure that this is normal. Not quite what the manual says. I'm just going to reset it real quick. And you get you have green and yellow solid while it's checking the sound ROM and doing its diagnostic test. And then your hard drive indicator light and flashing yellow on the CPU. So I will put this in the game and uh, maybe show you in the game and show you the diagnostic screen as well. Okay, so um, we're, we're in the uh, cabinet now and I just got through hooking up the board. Um, so we're gonna plug it in and let's see what our LEDs are. See if you can see that, hopefully you get the, the blinking, I don't know if the, there we go. We got our sound ROM booting, our heart, we can hear our hard drive. You just heard the speaker come on at that point.
There's obviously activity on the hard drive as well. You can hear it kind of reading the discs. You can see it flashing down there. Hopefully I have it in a track mode. I'm waiting for it to... The only thing I'll point out here is you do see the minus 5 volt LED um, up here now lit. Because this power supply is actually putting out the, the minus 5 through the, the JAMA harness. Yeah, but I think that's, that's about it. It's probably... I'm going to reset it one more time and then go around the front and show you the, the diagnostic screen. Alright, so I just booted up. We're just going to watch it from the front of the screen here. And I didn't have the uh, track mode on, the sound turned on, so that's why we couldn't hear anything from the after the, the beep when we were at the back of the cabinet. But this is what it looks like when it goes through the diagnostics from the front. You can kind of see it checking the different chips, the, the boot ROM, the RAMs, and then the sound as well. And then there's the game.